So now let's move to the next part of the webinar that is dedicated to designing a business model. Uh, here, uh, we will go through a process of designing a business model. But first, uh, in my opinion, it's um, worthful uh, to understand well why we need a business model. And from this point, it's worth starting with the meaning of the word, just model. So, model is a kind of scheme that allows to describe in an approximate way some aspects of reality. Why do we need models? Well, they allow us to look at the core, at the key elements of the phenomenon without getting into distracting details. So it's a bit like visiting a historic city. When traveling, we can get to know every corner of the city, but to quickly get an overview of the situation and plan our journey, we will use a map with the most important places clearly marked. So the map is a kind of model of the city. So what is the business model? Try to answer the question, what is the business model? A business model is simply a scheme of action, something that will allow us to easily plan subsequent actions and assumptions so that they can be implemented and achieve the expected effect. Thanks to the appropriate arrangement of subsequent stages, achieving the goals becomes much more easier. Entering our intentions into a specific template also gives us the opportunity to clarify what is unclear and what is inaccurate. So here you will find that you will find four steps, four phases of designing a business model. First, we start with the initiation phase where we are going to analyze the current state of the enterprise and its environment. The next stage is the ideation phase, where we are going to create ideas for our new business model. Next step is to integrate and refine the concept. So we are going to focus on customers, value proposition, resources, processes, and income generation. And the last phase is the implementation phase, where the model is just ready to implement in the reality. Here are some important issues that we should remember about while defining the impact investment business model. First of all, we should focus on simultaneous generation of social and environmental and economic results by the project. We should also remember to treat the profit is a necessary element of the company's operation, thanks to which it is possible to solve social and environmental problems. We should also remember about creating significant positive social and ecological effects, while reducing the negative impact on the natural environment and society. We should remember about sustainable and integrated way of creating and delivering value. And of course, not forget about the attractiveness of the value proposition to both the company's customers and other stakeholders. So here are the components of the impact investment business model. First comes the innovative idea. Then we Think of a goal that we want to achieve. So a solution or contributing to some social or environmental solution. Next, we should think about the product or service, the nature of which are to solve a selected social problem. So pro-social or pro-environmental involvement is the main goal of the company, not an additional activity. And the next one 
are the features of Pacific business because our enterprise takes benefits from the sales of program, of the sales of services, employees and employees, and is the subject of all market laws. So it works just like other commercial entities. Now let's move to designing a business model. So here is uh, the Canva, a business model Canva, which shows us business model as something that defines a certain way of doing business aimed at generating profit, but in accordance with the concept of management values while creating value for customers. Most often, the business model provides information on the relationship between market participants, the business model, the company strategy, the resources held and methods of creating value of, of, for, for customers, as well as the generated costs and sources of income. So in general, a business model is a kind of system of assumptions, elements, and interrelationship between them that allow us to know and characterize a phenomenon or entity functioning in business reality. So what should a good business model look like? Well, ideally, it should be simple, adequate to reality and understandable. So without simplifying or falsifying the complex reality in which the company operates. So here in this very process, we've obtain a diagram of our company's operation. During its creation, we can look at the most important areas of its functioning from a distance. So first, we plan to create the idea, then test solutions, check what effect they have had, and in case of positive effects, we introduce them permanently. So the business model describes the rationale behind the way an organization creates value and provides profits from this created value. So here the elements illustrated in the picture describes various aspects of company's functioning. And they can be designed into four main areas of business activity. Customer, offer, infrastructure, and finance. An unquestionable advantage of this model is that it can be presented in the form of a single Canva, which allows to obtain a detailed image of the discussed model, which has been divided into nine fields corresponding to each other. So, the starting point of the business model canvas is customer segmentation, to which the company will direct its offer. So, as customers, for example, groups of people or organizations to whom the activities will be addressed are the core of the business model. It's really worth paying uh, very special attention to analyze this target group in order to better understand and meet their needs more effectively. So here we try to define which group of people or organization we want to reach and think about the common features of the specific customers. For example, age, places of residence. We can also define one or even more segments of different sites. Here are some helpful questions. So who is the product or service created for? Who can be potential customers and why? And who will be able to pay for the product? 
So next, after defining customer, the next step is to identify a set of products or services that are important to the above mentioned group, so to the group of customers. So here comes the value proposition. So um, it has really great value to the customers and it should be described as something that prompts the customer to choose our product instead of our competitor's product. The value should solve the customer's problems or satisfy their needs. So it should stand out from the competition and in itself it should be the reason why it should be chosen over other products or services. The value proposition can be specific benefits such as social and environmental benefits. Here are some guiding questions. What value do we generate for our clients? What customer problem do we want to solve? What matters most to the customer? What is the greatest value for them? So the next step is the company must decide on the way um, they want to provide their customers with information about the products or services. So here in this step, we establish channels. So through the channels of communication, sales and distribution, our company is going to provide the customers with the knowledge about the products and services that they offer and gives them the opportunity to, evalu to evaluate the value that will be obtained after the purchase. So here, depending on the business model, the channels may be primarily designed to raise the awareness of recipients about the products or services that our company offers. We need to consider what kind of channels will we use. Uh, we can um, divide them into direct channels, for example, vendors at the company premises or our own online store, or indirect channels, for example, partner stores or wholesalers. Here comes some guiding questions. How do I make contacts with clients? What channels do I want to use? What methods work best? What costs are generated by the individual channels? Next steps is to establish customer relationships. Uh, in this step, the company must decide on the type of relationship it intends to establish with customers when giving them a value proposition, because this type of interaction will occur and affect the rest of the business model, such as how much uh, you incur costs. Delivering a value proposition to customers uh, should be um, connected with other consumer segment. So we should think about the purpose of these interactions. Uh, we may, for example, primarily care about acquiring new or retaining existing customers. So here are the customers' relationships questions. What kind of relationships do our clients expect from us? Can we live up to these expectations? Is the way of establishing relationships with customers integrated with other areas of the business model? Here comes another step of the business of creating the business model. So the revenue stream. Uh, delivering a value proposition to customers should 
generate revenue streams, while the mechanism uh, used by which the company gains found can be diverse and based on both one-time sales or multiple purchase, but mainly depend on the price that the customer is willing to pay for the value proposition. So here we must determine how much money is generated by the company in individual market segment. Uh, for example, a business may have several revenue streams that will differ in the pricing mechanism. So here is some guiding questions. What are your customers paying for now and what value would they be willing to pay for? How do they pay and how could they pay? What is the share of these revenue streams to total revenues? Okay, so before we move to the next section uh, with um, the main resources, um, let's repeat and preserve what we have learned a moment ago. Uh, so the, as you remember, we started from the customer segment, which is the first area of business model that includes um, various groups of people and organizations to whom we want to direct our activities. Um, there are the ones who will use our product, our service. So the division into groups should be based on the service segment. For example, customers with similar segments should be in one segment. So um, uh, as you remember, the customer segment is the basic element of the model. So um, uh, the best way to start is to think about our potential customers. Um, the question why? Um, well, the answer is because without customers, the demand for our product or service and the money flowing from them, uh, there is, frankly speaking, no point in starting our activity. So customers are the heart of any business model. That's why it's worth paying special attention to the analysis of this group. Um, so it's the best uh, way to specify our target group right away and divide customers into specific groups. Uh, so what customer groups can be distinguished based on the canvas model? Uh, so first of all, uh, we should uh, distinguish mass client, um, which is um, uh, made from a large group of clients with similar needs and problems. Uh, so it's for this group of clients uh, that will create a uniform value proposition and uh, distribution channels and both relationship. So in the mass, um, uh, in the group of mass client, everyone is our customer. Uh, we can also distinguish a very narrow group of well-defined recipient, where our customers create a specialist and specialized segment. We can also um, uh, distinguish some smaller uh, segments um, among our group of customers. For example, customers that uh, differ only slightly in their needs and problems. For example, in the activity of banks, uh, we can distinguish a segment um, uh, where the clients are um, put in large groups uh, with small amount of assets and fewer groups with no capital. So um, generally speaking, both types of customers have similar needs and problems, but on a different scale. Um, uh, we can also um, uh, distinguish a uh, diversified market. Um, so it's the one that um, the business provides. We provide our products and services to several groups of customers with different needs and um, problems. Uh, so in conclusion, um, uh, we need to ask uh, ourselves a question. 
Um, who do we want to create the value for? Who might be interested in the value that we offer? Uh, what customer segment can we distinguish? And who is our potential client? And the next, uh, the next um, part of uh, creating a business model was value proposition. So uh, we want to offer um, our customers a certain value, for example, a set of products or services that are important to the customer. Uh, the value proposition is just a fundamental distinction between what we offer and what our competitors offer. So the value proposition aggregates the benefits that our customer will receive. Um, in other words, the value proposition is just the reason why customers choose our company over other. Um, what's more, um, our products or services should bring real value to the customer's life. And this value uh, is um, something that meets their specific needs and will solve problem. So, for example, the value proposition is the set of benefits that we offer to our customers uh, when they buy our product service. Um, of course, um, uh, we can uh, also offer products that um, already exist in the market but enrich them with a certain feature or attribute. Um, we, so if we want to determine what value proposition um, our product can offer, we could ask ourselves the questions. For example, what programs or needs uh, will our product or service address? Um, as for the value proposition, uh, according to the business model canvas, um, can be divided into two groups. For example, quantitative, um, for example, lower price, shorter service, delivery time, cost reduction, or qualitative, for example, uh, comprehensive service, design, positive customer experience in using a given product. Um, so, yeah, um, this is why the customer will choose our service or um, uh, product others. And the next, um, the next um, segment was channels. And um, channels are something that um, uh, we use to deliver our value proposition to the customer. So um, these are, for example, communication, distribution, or sales channels. Um, they indicate the points of contact between the customer and our company. So for example, these are places where our client visits and meets your brand, for example. Um, uh, generally speaking, channels should provide the customer with knowledge about our company's product and service. Um, they should help the customers evaluate the product or service, enable the purchase of the company's product or services, and provide, for example, uh, after-sale uh, support. Uh, so channels are um, the element that describe how the company communicates and reaches customers to provide added value. They are just the meeting points of the company with the customer, so they play a very important role in creating the customer experience. Um, so how uh, will we communicate with the customer and sell them our goods? Well, for example, on uh, premises sales, uh, within online sales, or by use of all the available um, uh, Channels, for example, using only channeling. Um, as for the customer relations, um, this is the area, as you remember, um, that deals with the characteristics of the relationships with um, that we establish with our customer while 
communicating value proposition. So it can be a very personal relationship or, for example, fully automatic service. Um, so our company should be clear about the type of relationship that we want to have with our customers. Uh, this element describes um, the type of interaction that the company has with the uh, customer. So um, uh, this segment can be divided into personal relationship, which is very common among, for example, business clients and contractors, uh, where the relationship um, within, within the client uh, uh, is built for a very long time. Uh, we can also um, uh, distinguish the direct contact, which is based on direct um, interaction with the client. So, for example, by consultant or caregivers, um, a point of for this purpose, for example, um, service and personal support, um, which means availability of consultants and even um, dedicated employees to service. We can also distinguish uh, automated contact, uh, which we can find, for example, in car washes or uh, when uh, renting bikes, for example. So it's self-service or automated service. Mm, so uh, the contact uh, between the employees and the customers is uh, none or significantly limited. Uh, we can also um, distinguish a co-creation where the client co-creates the value with the company by issuing opinions on customers' websites or, um, for example, in uh, social media. So the choice of relationship uh, between um, our company and the client is really vivid uh, and um, uh, it also largely depends on the cost involved and how it integrates with the other elements of the business model. Uh, so, for example, it's impossible to sell a product to a mass segment while maintaining a type of personal relationship. And um, uh, the last one was revenue street. So, um, this means that the purpose of uh, our business should be to make money. And um, if we are providing um, the customers with the right value proposition, um, they should uh, uh, generate um, revenue streams. So in this area, we should um, indicate how our product or service will earn money. Um, we may have a slightly different pricing mechanism for each customer sentiment, um, but um, generally this element describes how the company generates revenue from uh, each customer uh, segment. Um, uh, of course, uh, revenue segments uh, can be combined. Uh, we can um, find many ways of um, generating uh, revenue, for example, product sale, um, a kind of fee that um, charged uh, our client for using the service or products. So we are thinking about subscription. Um, uh, for example, generating of course, money from advertising, um, we can generate um, the money from the fee for additional uh, service or commission. Um, so yeah, the uh, division of revenue streams is uh, really vivid and we should really carefully um, think about the way that we should earn uh, our money. <laughs>